What do you want to do? I don't know. Don't have an intro. Welcome. Welcome to podcast episode 12, the mythical 12 episode where the average podcast decides I quit, I give up. That will not be us because I'm not leaving. Welcome 12. This is the Marvel segment. If you didn't mean to click on the Marvel segment, don't go. You'll like it. I promise. I am Michael Glazier and he is Joe Rival slash Gamble slash Joe slash whatever you want to call him, aka Mr. Fantastic, aka Long Schlong Van Hugen Dong. Whatever you want to say, it works. We're going to open. Right, you were at my show where I gave my name, Long well, Von Van I mean, Hugen Dong. I don't wasn't miss, there. I don't miss the show, man. I have to make sure because, uh, you know, I want to help with, you, you got to get the poses. You my dreams are yours. My dreams are your dreams. Your dreams are my dreams. Mm -hmm. And I want my dreams to be up inside your dreams. We're going to start this Marvel section with Eternals. We had a quick Eternals news. It'll be set around the same time as Far From Home. Which, which shortly after Endgame, like right after Endgame. Yeah. I think Far From Home was... It was a good way to end a phase, but then... But then right after that, we had to wait two years before we got anything else. So it was just a not like a big it was more of an Iron Man villain than a Spider-Man villain that he was yeah, fighting. Sure. It was more of a like the drone thing was like very unrealistic. It, it was all about the movie felt like it was just trying to set up the cliffhanger. And then you have J. Jonah Jameson. That's the same as Sam right. Raimi's. Yep. So, it, so I don't know, a little, probably in the minority there, but I, I'm not a big fan of Far From Home. But Eternals, set around the same time. I saw a couple trailers for Eternals, and when Dane Whitman, a.k.a. Jon Snow, a.k.a. Kit Harington, a.k.a. The Black Knight, was AKA talking A.k.a. The other long, 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 huge and dong. Yeah. Speaking of which, I would have to go find that tweet, uh, but I called uh, Kit Harington as The Black Knight like three months before it was announced. You did. Yep, I can vouch. I should do that more often with other actors, but... We will uh, get into that. Oh, no. So he's talking to Cersei, who is uh, Gemma Chan, Gemma Chan, the main character, I believe, in Eternals, the leader, kind of Icarus. Is See, that's a, a hard thing, because, like, in the comics, Angelina jo Jolie's character is, like, the primary one. Angelina Jolie's the highest paid person in the movie, but all the trailers is around Selma, ha Selma Hayek. Yeah. I mean, Icarus, 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 freaking Richard Madden looks badass. Back to where I was fine. Dane Whitman is talking to Cersei. And he's like, why Why didn't you help? And Cersei's like, we were only told to interfere if a deviant it's was... Gemma. 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 Gemma Chan. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we were only supposed to get... We were only supposed to interfere if deviants were evolved or involved. I mean, Thanos straight up is a deviant. So I'm, <laughs> right. I'm confused as to... Uh, they need then, to get into that. We, we mentioned that yeah. in the previous episode, but they need to explain to us why... How did... that lineage works. Yeah, because... you know. Because the explanation so far of why they didn't get involved is not good. Yeah. So, and it is a big, like, for those of you, like, maybe the average moviegoer won't care, but the Marvel nerd fans that they have to try to appease, it will be enough to ruin the movie for them. Yeah. Cause it's, it, they say, like, everyone who knows Thanos knows that he's a deviant. And then they straight up say in the trailer, we're not supposed to get interfere unless a deviant is evolved, involved. How do I say that? The deviant is involved, and then they just they just watch like Thanos decimate half the planet. I don't know. It, right, it yep. just doesn't make sense. It doesn't but, make sense, but, but it's yeah, right, it's the same time as Far From Home, so it's directly after the the snapping, the snapping. So <laughs> the second best thing that ended with happening. Well, speaking of movies that you know we have we've talked about before, there was a movie that was coming out that there its release date was like we thought it was like probably should delay it by again and then it was potentially delayed till january rumored to and they were like oh but we we thought as long as they get away from halloween halloween kills and dune kills and dune venom another date change but it's moved up to yeah, uh it's not it's not October 15th anymore. It's October 1st. October 1st. Which, which is right around the corner. I'm so happy. Um, uh, that just means that they were smart and saw the com competition. They probably no, did. They, they, saw, they, they saw us. 
Right. They saw it was it was probably like Woody Harrelson, Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy. They were probably like, oh, we were watching this podcast together and they told us that we should change. So we called the director, <laughs> called Sony and we're like, hey, we need to move this up. Yeah. Why are we why are we competing with Halloween Kills and Dune, which and is they're like, like Wait, should we move it? Should we move it into the next week? No, we're not going to compete with Dune. Should we move it two weeks forward? Two weeks forward? Well, I mean, that's what they suggest, but we can't just steal. If you steal, steal their idea, them. they're going to know. Yeah. Let's, Let's move, move it, up. it up. Let's move it back. Genius. Yeah. So now, Brilliant. now they're going to, if we say that they watched our podcast, they'll just argue that they didn't, but we, right. we know they did. Know. Um, but yeah, we called that. We, we called the move that it needed to happen. We called it. I'm excited smart. because so it's the just a soon, smart move. It's for smart. Sony. You don't want to compete with certain ones. And now with Shang Chi, I think Shang Chi's success was like, they were like, okay, I think they were trying to delay it to see how these superhero movies were going to do. And then when they saw that Shang Chi was doing well, they were like, okay, people will go to see it in theaters. You don't want to put it. You also don't want to put it in November. You didn't want to put it in November because you have Eternals to compete with mm-hmm. in November. So. And you don't want to put it in December because no, there's the biggest a MCU lot movie. Of, you got No Way uh-huh. Home, and there was that new movie that's coming out in Christmas. Wait, Matrix Hawkeye's coming out. Yeah, Matrix Revolution. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> resurrection. Any Keanu Reeves movie? Yeah, any Keanu Reeves movie you want to so, stay away from. Too. You don't want to. You don't want to compete with them. So moving it up was super smart. Yeah, we first. called it. Just want to say it, Woody Harrelson. I know you're watching. Smart, smart dude. If you ever want to hang out and maybe partake and stuff, let me know. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's really all we had to say about it. Super excited. Venom, is, Venom, Loki, Iceman, my three favorite Marvel characters. So anything more Venom, um, I'm all for. All right. So we did just mention Shang-Chi. Um, speaking of that, it, it was the highest audience rating ever for a superhero movie. It was at 98%. Fans love it. We were part of it. If you watched our Shang-Chi review, our spoiler-free Shang-Chi review, and we gave it a nine and a half out of 10 or nine. So um, in that range. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We loved it. It's my personal favorite Marvel movie yet, probably besides Venom, just because I'm I'm super biased, like super biased. I understand the lighting is terrible. The, the script the isn't Venom the riot. best. The vi- Ren- Venom Venom riot, riot fight. Yeah, the villain doesn't make a lot of sense. People hated the villain. I get it. I get it. I love it. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I love Shang-Chi, and I, I agree 100%. Nine, 98% approval rating. That's equivalent to getting giving it a 9.8 out of 10, which is right around where we were at. So, sure. <laughs> if you're doing just Phase 4 movies and comparing it only to Phase 4 movies you, or projects, it's a 10. Yep. Best so, one yet, so awesome. There was a character that was in Shang Chi. Now, like spoiler, if you haven't seen it by now, you're watching a podcast talking about Marvel. You might see spoilers. Wong was in it, played by Benedict Wong. Played by Benedict Wong, and Wong was recently asked about a spinoff series for the character because fans love him so much. Yeah, he's in damn near everything now. So, my question: Would you be? Would you watch it? Which the answer is yes, because it's a Marvel product. Yeah. So we're going to watch it. But would you be invested? So the thing here, I, I I do like Wong. I think his role has probably increased to what a comic version probably would be. Like, I feel like he has a bigger role in Doctor Strange's story, other people's stories. I feel like I would need him paired up with someone. Because everyone's got a, a second person. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, even Every... Spider-Man has Doctor Strange. Yeah. Loki had um, Sylvie. Yeah, Loki had Sylvie um, and Owen Wilson. And Owen Wilson, and then ended with He Who Remains. Like, and Falcon and the Winter Soldier had Bucky. Um, they had each other. Yeah, they had each other. Wanda and Wanda and, uh, and Wanda had supporting. Characters. Wanda had Vision. And so like, <laughs> yeah. Wanda Vision. Wanda had Agatha eventually. Like, yeah, they so need they got supporting characters. You need, and maybe I don't. I don't know. Dorma, like if I don't know. You yes, could make Mordo. I would watch it. You could make Mordo part Mordo, of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you probably wouldn't want to go as big as Dormammu, yeah, or Mephisto. Like you wouldn't want to do that sort of thing. I think you, you, they could do that. You could bring Aquafina in. Yeah, you could have Shang Chi come in for a little bit, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'd be all for it. I think as long as Kevin Feige or John Favreau have a hand in it, I think it would be good. No matter where they went with it. However, I would need to know details before I'm invested in it, but I would watch it anyway because I do so think, I think Benedict s- Wong is awesome yeah well in regards to magic and just kind of energies and stuff i think 
Wong's kind of got. So you're looking at something with a mystical artifact or some mystical element to it. So and um, Wong is a big. He's like in What If in Doctor Strange, he is a studier. Like he reads ancient text. Right. He is very knowledgeable. So it would have to be you know like I don't know almost like I wouldn't wouldn't mind like a Iron Fist. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't mind like a Inspector mystery level show where it's like a not like sherlock but you know something along those lines right. where he 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 shows off his knowledge and his abilities but is looking after an ancient artifact right looking for something like something like sure that. i'd be all for that yeah speaking of potential series or shows there's a trailer we should be expecting soon yeah so uh, i just saw this that um it, it said that rumored for a hawkeye trailer next week don't know if we're getting it um, because we were also told that we were going to get a Spider-Man trailer for the last, like, every week for the past two months. Take that with a grain of salt. But all, follow if, if, where if, you get the information. If if Hawkeye if Hawkeye is coming out in two months, you should expect something soon. Something. We got a poster, got a couple of images, but... Honestly, when we went and saw Shang-Chi, I expected a Hawkeye trailer. I knew Spider-Man trailer Attached would be it. in it. Right. But I thought Hawkeye's trailer would be I mean, in what it. it was. It was it was Venom, Spider Man, Eternal, something like that, right? Yeah, yep. It was so. Spider Man, Eternals, and Venom were all in it, and it was like I was really, I was really expecting a Hawkeye trailer. Sure. And uh, because we didn't see it, I was like, okay, maybe we'll get. It'll be like its own thing. And then we saw that what's his name, the guy who plays Hawkeye, Jeremy Renner. Uh, Jeremy Renner. He was had his Ronin tattoos on. Um, and they were sh- showing like filming or shooting, so yeah, why wouldn't he have? I don't know. Well, first of all, that like let's throw that, let's just say that first. People were surprised that he had his Ronin tattoos. Did you expect him to get them lasered off now yeah. that end game's over? Like, no, oh, nope, snap, but his family's back, so the tattoos went away. Yeah, like, unless what? Iron Man, unless Iron Man like wished those tattoos away when he snapped, uh, right? Like. Why would you think that he wouldn't have those tattoos? So, yes, of course he has those tattoos. Yeah, of course he would have keeping, those tattoos. Marvel keeping the continuity. I of, genuinely uh, was like on the verge of swearing. I, I was like, like, I'm not <laughs> right. Like, you don't. You really think he would not have those tattoos? Like, come on, people. Like, why was that a question? Anyway, because those are there, that means it's still kind of in post production. So that explains why there's no trailer yet. But it's also getting late. And you've yeah, mentioned before, if it's up. getting so late, Miss Marvel and Hawkeye are really getting close to that. Are yeah. we getting delayed moments? Yeah. So hopefully a Hawkeye trailer comes out soon. Obviously, he's going to have his Ronin tattoos. And obviously, Kate Bishop's going to be wearing her purple outfit from the comics because yep. we've seen some images. Sh- we've stuff. seen the images. So, you know, there's a lot of things that are obvious from it. I think it's going to, they said it's only going to be six episodes. Okay. So it's a, it's a six. short, it's a short season. Uh, it sounds like it's going to get another se- a second season. My guess is the second season is almost is going to be just Kate Bishop. Probably, and I think yeah. Hawkeye is probably going to either die or just move along. Yeah, retire. Um, there's a character that's really close with Hawkeye, though, Black Widow. Not only did that movie just not good, um, but we heard some stuff about that, kind of. So the yeah. Russo brothers were in talks with uh, working on another project. And now because of the Scarlett Johansson lawsuit, they backed out until that gets settled because they it makes them weary about working with Marvel at the moment. Sure. Uh, I mean... I think uh, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch had a statement in regards to it too. He, just he said, said uh, he said it's a mess. Yeah, he said um, it's a mess. Some people have said I don't want to talk about it. Some people have put in their weight. Some people have said I support Scarlet. Some people have said like Drax said I told you you should have hired me. Right. Like, he, he tried to make a joke about it, but because of the situation, people weren't happy that he made a joke about it. I think if I, it were me, I'd just be like. I support Scarlet because I understand the situation. However, I also understand being an actor. Contract discussions can get muddled. So there might have been a miscommunication. Yeah. So like, I, I feel like I would just handle it that way. And I'd be like, if you have any other f- future questions, ask Disney. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, I mean, uh, I mean, obviously they would want the Russo brothers back. Um, but what do you probably... think they would be working on? I think, uh, the whole the either like a battle world situation 
um, where you, you pull people, pull a bunch of different people from, I think it's Secret Wars, uh, where they pull it to the Battle Wars, Battle World. Yep. Uh, and that usually and has they, the Grandmaster involved somehow. Yeah. So you, you pull it, pull all these different realities, these different characters from these different realities to fight each other. That's how it do. You could get different. Uh, different MCU. And what are the Man, Russo brothers? Kevin. What is their big stuff they're known for? Uh, Infinity War and Endgame. Oh, mm. okay. So you would probably want somebody like that back. Yeah. And for like a do, big uh, project. Yeah, a big project. You wouldn't want them. They did Civil War too, I think. Or, which involved like basically or having... Winter Soldier. They did Winter Soldier, I think. I don't oh, know. I was going to say. The, so, because if it was Civil War, that's another one that has 50 yeah. characters in it. Right. Like they know how to so. handle movies that have a ton of different actors. Sure. So yeah, uh, hopefully they get that figured out because if it was Secret Wars, there's really nobody else you'd want right now. Otherwise, you'd have to get a team of directors. Yeah. The Doctor Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch was asked about the director change uh, because it was Scott Derrickson and uh, now it is Sam Raimi. He basically said that he was sad to hear Scott Derrickson, who Scott Derrickson's still there in a creative role. Right. Yep. He just stepped. Um, he stepped down as the director. Yeah. So, um, and he said he said he was sad, but at the same time, the big boys called him and basically explained to him what was going on. And the big boys being it. Kevin Feige. Kevin Feige. Yeah. Um, and because <laughs> like Kevin Feige Sam, and his big boys. Yeah. And uh, he basically said, and that that was that. It's fine. Like, right. It's okay. As in, hey man, if you have a problem, I can get you some more money. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of secrets. Secret Invasion has begun production. Yeah, so we it's a lot of rumors with that. Hopefully, we get more news. You got Amelia Clark in it. Don't um, know her role. You got possibly Chloe Bennett. For those of you that have been paying attention to the earlier episodes that have been sticking around since the early episodes of the show, um, I am not looking forward to Secret Invasion. I hate the Skrulls. That's another reason why Far From Home was bad for me. Nick Fury was a Skrull the whole time. So you're telling me any Iron Man's not dead. That was a scroll. I mean, it was a scroll. I hate the scrolls. It could be anything. As soon as you took take you have shape shifting and time travel. Anyone can in multi dimensions. Anyone can be anything because of scrolls. Captain Marvel, that was a scroll. That was just a scroll. Like I, I hate it. I I really, I really hate it. So I Secret Invasion, probably gonna be really good. But my expectations for it. I'm purposefully setting extremely high because you're going to have to do a lot to win me over. Obviously right. they don't care about winning me over. I'm just some dude on the internet, but they're the dude. I'm the dude, but like, I really, I'm not a fan of shape shifting. You got a big, you got a, you got some big names in that one. So it's going to be, you got to have them carry the story a little bit. Yeah. And you're going to have to make it. So, the scrolls make a comment like we only shape shift when we have to we don't shape shift right. for fun i i, I don't want to poo poo it too much right but i hope am we get uh hope we get uh agent colson back hope we get daisy johnson hopefully we get hulkling well you could get agent colson back just have a scroll look like him exactly <laughs> like this is what i'm talking about uh anyway let, let, let's move on, uh, unless you have something to say. I, oh. I have nothing positive to say about it. What, what if? if um, yeah, we're going to talk about what if next week. Little teaser for next week. We are outside of the Discord, oh, so we would like to try to get the Discord set up um, for everyone. However, we are going to do a actors we want to see in Marvel, and uh, we would, we're going to give them our own fan casting as well. So be on the lookout for that. Very fun. Um, I already have a list of at least 10. That's probably going to get longer. I am a pretty big movie buff. I like a yeah, lot I have, of I had actors. Like five, I had like five actors I had to look up because recognized a couple, didn't recognize a couple, but some you had on there. Yeah, there's a there's a few from like shows that I like, and I didn't want to yeah. like take too many from specific shows, but right. we, can get, we can get into that next time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's talk about what if. What if was is uh, on one of the most anticipated episodes of the series because it was such a popular comic book series. It was really supposed to resemble what what if was about. So it was supposed to be like a completely different take on just like an original storyline. And this episode was supposed to be Party Thor, unless the leaks were wrong, which is totally possible. Well, obviously, um, wasn't Party Thor. 
because so. the Avengers episode where everybody died was also supposed to be called Loki and something like it was supposed to be focused right. on Loki. And I know it, Loki one they they took a Loki one out because they didn't want to. They were supposed like, to. They didn't want to go from Loki into Loki again. Right. So it was what if zombies? <laughs> no, um, what if what if walkers? We'll open up with the fan reaction and some critic reaction. Um, it's so far one of the most loved for, we've mentioned him before brandon davis he's like one of the big marvel guys says it's his favorite episode yet um there's a few guys i watch on youtube shout out heavy spoilers uh the guy on there said he really liked the episode a lot and that he believes that it's the episode that if you were to tell people what what if is and they'd never seen it this is the episode he'd send them to so a lot of people loved it said it's their best episode yet thought it was amazing I didn't. <laughs> I uh, I put it right in the middle. I think episodes two and four were. You made, you made a tier list. We love tier lists here. Yeah, we. So I've I've ranked the episodes as each one has happened. Right after the second episode, I said, "What did I like better, two or one, two? So my go four, two, five, three, one. No, one, three, one, three. Sorry, one three. Yeah, and I would just three flip flop. I would flip. I would flip flop one and five. I put Captain Carter above zombies. I think. Yeah, and I yeah, honestly, zombies was so disappointing for me that um, I would be totally fine putting Carter. My personal ranking, I think. So maybe I'm letting other people get to me for my personal, like, just I'm listening to other people and saying maybe I'm being too harsh. Because I agree, I I rated it super low, and then after listening to other people, I'm trying to come around on it. Right. Um, so, but honestly, if you said Car- Agent Carter was or Captain Carter was better than it, I would wouldn't I wouldn't fight you on it. Let's just say that if you try to tell me similar to other people saying that it's better than the T'Challa or Doctor Strange episodes, I might fight you on that. Sure, because yeah, the, the T'Challa like episode said, to me things- completely represents what if, and Doctor Strange was a like a cinematic art piece that I yeah. I would I fell in love with that episode. Right. So I think the the like the nostalgia of it being a first episode or um, even with the WandaVision and Loki, I said that WandaVision and Loki are one A and one B or two A and two B. Right. Um, Because WandaVision came out first and it was like, that's, that's like a chunk of content we didn't have and we're getting all of a sudden. So that the same thing with the, what if it's like, we don't know what to expect just like WandaVision and then we're getting that. Um, And so it's like, you appreciate all the little things and you appreciate the episode as like, this is what they're trying to do. That's right. why I think Captain Carter kind of stood out to me because there was enough sure. little differences. And then, yeah. Compared and to me the- personally, I, I rate zombies slightly higher than Captain Carter because Captain Carter to me felt like a kind of a reshoot of the first Captain America movie, right. as opposed to zombies telling what was felt to me more like an original story. But my issues that I had with the zombies movie is why I think it's arguable that the Captain one is better. The zombie logic makes no sense. And I've I've watched every episode of The Walking Dead. I've seen... <laughs> right. You're a huge yeah. Walking Dead fan. I watched up until Negan showed up. Yeah. And I didn't even watch that whole season until he showed up. I watched the mid-season finale of that season. And then I watched the finale where Negan showed up. And yeah. then they killed Glenn, and I stopped watching the show. Yeah, because Stephen Yun, which I have not added him to our list, he will be added to that list. That's that's a good casting. We I, have a we Stephen have a couple Yen Walking Dead people on that list. Yeah, already. So yeah. Um, Andrew Lincoln. Shit, we should not. There's another one. See, and that's uh, the thing is, I don't want to add too many from the same show because there there's yeah. there's so, like a lot of people from there's specific shows that are stacked, and I just want to take them all, but you don't want to. Like, right. I don't. Know. Yeah. Um. Let's just do a quick, like, I'm going to run through the episode, what happened, and then we can talk about it. Okay. So just a quick breakdown. It's not going to be very long um, because you said that you've said that exact thing before, like in re like to give people a recap of something like just letting you know, it's not very long. Uh, Uh, Yeah. I've, I've, I've said that too many times in my life. Um, so it opens with Hulk coming from the Bifrost to warn the world about Thanos, Thanos, and it shows that he's at Doctor Strange's office yeah, building, Sanctum Sanctorum, the Sanctum Sanctorum. Um, when he goes out into the street, Ebony Ma and Call Obsidian show up through a portal, and they are fought and killed by Iron Man. 
Wong, Doctor Strange. However, then it is revealed that they are zombie versions of themselves who all of their powers and still work and all of their brain function is still there and they know how to use all of their abilities in Iron Man suit similar, which is exactly how it worked in the comics as well. Um, little thing about the comics is they realize in the comics that if they didn't give in to their hunger, that sensation of need for hunger actually went away. That is not the case in this one, or at least that we know of. Ebony Ma, after turning into a zombie, his powers still work, which in my opinion could have ended the episode because he could have just finished it right there because he's well, very powerful. He's just probably the strongest of the Black Order. Yeah, exactly. I would say so. Strange's cape tries to help them. Doctor Strange's cape tries to help them. Um, and he does. And then Spider-Man and Wasp show up and save Hulk because... Hulk refuses to show up, so it's just Bruce Banner. He won't turn. So this is the point where right. Hulk is refusing to be turn into himself because he's has internal quarrels. He only protects Bruce. He doesn't become whatever. Then we find out. Yeah, he from, just got his ass kicked by Thanos too. That's exactly. Cool. Yep. To which we find out where the zombies came from. They were in this version, just like in the comics. They came from a different realm. However, in our version, in this what if version, it's from the quantum realm. In when she spends when uh, Hank Pym's wife, Pym's wife, Janet Van Janet Dyne, Van Dyne spends too much time in the quantum realm. She ends up becoming like a zombie, like quantum it's, virus. Yeah. It's a quantum virus that turns her into this zombie type thing and turns Hank into one. When they come back out, and then they Ant Man and Wasp motor are sitting vehicles. there. Yep, they can drive motor vehicles. They can drive motor vehicles. They can, they can handle their Wasp or their Ant Man suit. Um, Wasp and Ant Man are sitting there. Wasp and Scott Lang are sitting there and uh, waiting to see what happens. And all of a sudden, they're attacked by zombie Hank Pym and zombie Janet. And Wasp bolts, leaving Scott behind, they just ditches him. And the last thing we see is the cliche hand on the foggy window from scott and then that's where we find out like they're telling this to hulk after the avengers are all turned that's when the world was doomed because the world couldn't handle zombie avengers they were too powerful because they all still have their powers and functionality um they know exactly how to do the exact same things that the previous and in terms of had pace of spread of the virus they say the entire eastern seaboard was taken in less than 24 hours then they get together there's like we see a small team of people they're slowly revealing who is still alive and not a zombie um they show happy is one of those people which is john favreau's character i'm not sure if he voiced him though um they show happy interested in boxing he like does like a little boxing thing um, I'm not sure if that was a recollection. So, so does Happy box in the book or in the previous movies? Because um, his character, his, his father, I want to say his father did. Uh, when John Favreau was on Friends, his character ended being a UFC fighter. So I wasn't sure if they were doing like a deep cut John Favreau Easter egg or not. All right, I think I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. But I want to say well, that there was. Yeah, I'm wasting too much time, but uh, I want to say that there... I, I, I would prefer it be a John Favreau deep cut, like if you were sure. a fan of him on Friends. That's what I prefer. Okay. But I'm sure that he has a boxing background. And then we see that Happy has Tony's Iron Man hand. Blam. Yeah. Blam, 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 blam. <laughs> when they're trying to find a way to Camp Lehigh, um, we see that Winter Soldier, Okoye, I wrote down Winter Soldier twice, Sharon Carter, Spider-Man, Wasp, Happy... A guy named Kurt, which I'm not sure where Kurt he is. The, Kurt is the guy from Ant-Man. Okay. He's a polka dot man in James Gunn's whatever, that guy. Okay. There's T.I., there's Luis, and there's Kurt. Okay. Well, Kurt is one of the people. Those are all people that are not infected yet. And then as they're trying to like get the train going, Hawkeye and Falcon show up. And this was my favorite part of the episode. Falcon, this version of Falcon, can control birds, just like in the comics. So he yeah. actually has a superpower as opposed to our Captain Falcon, who just has his suit and vibranium now from Wakanda. And then somebody, I saw somebody made a joke about he must be controlling Hawkeye because he's a hawk. Boo. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Hawkeye shows up. They, I don't think they kill anybody. I don't think they're able to get Falcon anyone. dies. Falcon's about to kill Bucky and Okoye. Well, Falcon dies, but I don't think they were able to turn anybody else this time. Nope. 
Nope. Um, well, then they get on the train and Dr. Strange's cape goes on top of Spider-Man. He asks if he can take off the cape and Wasp says it looks like uh, it may be, maybe it'll grow on you, which... Spider-Man, No Way Home, Doctor Strange is in it. They're supposed to be very close. Benedict Cumberbatch in that same interview with about the Black Widow mentioned that the characters are get really close in the movie. Yep, he needs uh he needs Spider-Man needs a, a mentor, I guess. He's and not... there's a future episode of What If where we're gonna see Sorcerer Spider, most likely. Yeah. I so, think so. I think so I think there's a good I think that's an Easter egg for both of those. On the train, Captain America shows up. He fights Bucky, but he also kills Sharon. He converts Sharon. He yep. turns Sharon. Yep. Um, Bucky does grab. Does this like grab the shield thing? Yep. Because yep. Captain it's America. really can... sick. It's like a good fight. That's uh, like a good cinematic scene. But overall, the art in this episode, just like the whole show, beautiful. Right. Like, the animation's yeah. awesome. Um, but this really, I mean, that the if fight. If you just want to say Bucky, Bucky's beautiful, you can say that. <laughs> the fight scene between Bucky and Captain, I think, showed that the best. Yeah. Um, Bucky wins takes the shield after killing cap hope gets covered in sharon because she went inside sharon her mouth and then exploded, and, and exploded yeah. her but gets cut back to the theory back to the theory of um you know why we took yellow jacket ant-man or yellow jacket could have flown up thanos blew him up for those of you that missed it go check it out it was separate from the podcast we did a marvel theory of what if villains had to fight thanos we took yellow jacket for that exact reason Go inside and blow them up. We just chose a, not the mouth. We chose the other end, the toenail. That happened, but we found out after killing Sharon, she did get cut while fighting her, which means she's going to turn. Another like zombie cliche main character turn. Yeah. that is going to have to get turned, and they know it's happening, but it's going to happen slowly because it's just a small cut. They, and then they show up at the they show up at Camp Lehigh. And all the walkers are sitting out, but not the walkers. Going. Yeah, the zombies. The, the zombies are all yeah. sitting, but not going in. We don't know why, but they get into Camp Lehigh. Peter reveals Aunt May has been killed during while they're on the train. By the way, she he reveals that Uncle Ben, mom, dad, Uncle Ben. Yeah. So that's the first time they bring up Uncle Ben in the MCU, um, outside of his initials that were on Peter's briefcase. Yep. Um, Benjamin F. Parker. I think. Yeah. And then he also mentions that Aunt May is killed. She was a walker. Hope blames herself while she's cut. She blames herself for bringing upon the apocalypse because she just had to go get her mom yep. when it's like no i mean she like, you didn't know if she could have stood her ground and killed the two of them right there you know as opposed to panicking and leaving and scott scott, scott would have turned eventually but she could have just could have saved the, the world yeah. so like but you know we get it we didn't she didn't know the extent of what was about to happen right. quantum realm you never know like they yeah. had a lot of we questions s- we still don't um, so she turns herself into big wasp so that they can get into Camp Lehigh and then she distracts all the walkers. Obviously, pff, my wife was watching this episode with me. It's the first one she's watched with me. Um, she was like, so she's going to be just a big zombie now, right? And I was like, yep, we just don't know when. And later in the episode, she is a big zombie. After helping them, the Kurt mentions Baba Yaga because like the place seems cursed and it's the witch, the evil witch. Yeah. And they're like, oh. That's a that's a weird thing to bring up. And inside Camp Lehigh is Vision. And he's fine. And we see that he's been living in there. And he tells them that the time stones energy mind, and mind stone. Or the mind stones energy and frequency that gives out keeps the walkers at bay. We're like, oh, okay. And it's just like an interesting conversation. We find out that that's why not they're not attacking Camp Lehigh. Because we find out that the zombie infection attacks their limbic system. So, you know, brain, chemistry, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Um, and then we see Futurama. <laughs> Scott, yeah. Scott's, they turn the chair around that is watching the cameras at Lehigh and Scott Lang's head is in a jar. Just his head. That's all that's alive. Yep. He, so. used, uh, he used the Mind Stone to make a cure for his head. Mm-hmm. So we find out that the Mind Stone person. can cure the disease and Scott's just alive. And this is where a lot of the humor comes in. And Scott proves that he's, you know, Paul Rudd. You know, I don't know if it is Paul Rudd, but I don't know. Tons of puns. It was tons of puns. Um, Yeah, it was a good part of the episode. It was, you know, a little overdone, but still good. Perfect example. So, yes, that seems like a a rip off of Futurama for those that have seen it. But um, it's a perfect example of what an animated show allows the MCU to do. Like, you can't really do that in live action very (laughs) well. Be be kind of dumb, gross (laughs) and gross. But um, 
yeah it, it's just this this exam this this episode was a great example of what the animation allows them to get away with i prefer animation over live action i prefer animated movies um so i've been enjoying this and i just think this proves like what they can do with it however as they're walking around camp lehigh there we find out that uh vision has been keeping so he he has this like little dark interaction conversation that they have. We find out that he's been keeping Scarlet Witch alive as a zombie. Yep, just the most uh, powerful person in the MCU. Just, just the most powerful person in the MCU. Sitting keep, in a cell. Including feeding her T'Challa's leg. And yeah. then she he was going to feed her piece by piece. So another thing that they ripped off from other Is it Camp stuff. Lehigh or is it Terminus? Right. <laughs> I thought the same thing. Um, what was that character's name who got his leg eaten? Uh, tainted meat. Oh yeah, Bob. It was just Bob. Bob. Put Dale in the comics, but Bob in the Bob. Live action. But then we see that T'Challa is alive. It's just he's missing his right leg because it was fed to Scarlet Witch. Her powers were apparently too strong to resist his Mind Stone treatment because she's too powerful. She's more powerful than an Infinity Stone. She's more powerful than five Infinity Stones. Right. So he could cure everyone, but he can't cure her. And then, but he doesn't cure everyone. But he doesn't cure everyone. Instead, he decides to just stay there taking care of Zombie Wanda. Anyway, he says, You woke her up because they were making noise. We find out Okoye says Wakanda is the safe, the last safe place on earth. Vision comes to the realization that what he's been doing with Wanda is wrong instantly and <laughs> takes out the Mind Stone mm-hmm. because he Even doesn't know, like, he can't Vision- imagine leaving Wanda. Yeah, Vision, you know, someone in Age of Ultron was willing to, after just meeting humans and processing the information of humanity, is willing to sacrifice himself to save humanity. humanity. But in Ultron. Not this version. Not this version of Vision. Nope. And then in Infinity War, he's willing to sacrifice the, he was willing to sacrifice himself so Wanda could kill like destroy the last infinity stone so that he could mm-hmm. save the entire planet. You know, he's always put people first, but you know, and not this time, not this time. Um, well, after that Hulk picks up the mind stone, which I think is interesting because without being Hulk himself, that wasn't able to happen in the live action movies, but Bruce Banner picks up mind stone. Yeah. He's got, it's like a little shard. He's holding a shard, but the <laughs> mind stone's connected to it. It still should, it still should just, be like, he's just Bruce Banner, right? Yeah, exactly. He's not, I oh. thought that was weird. Scarlet Witch recognizes Vision's dead body and gets angry. So then Hulk turns green, gives them the Mind Stone. I'm not sure who takes it, but whoever's holding it can hold it. Hulk resists Scarlet's bite because he turns green and then they fight. And then uh, we basically know that Hulk, we, we're going to find out who would win, but we don't get to see the finish of that fight. So the last- I assume Wanda. I assume Wanda, the long-awaited question of Wanda versus Hulk, because we've never seen them fight. However, um, we are both in the camp of Wanda versus the field. Wanda wins. Yeah. So Wanda's the most powerful. person that is stronger that Thanos needed an Infinity Gem to beat was Captain Marvel. He had to use the Power Stone. So he had to use the Power Stone to beat Captain Marvel, but uh, five. Well, yeah, stones Wanda held beat off Scarlet. Five. Yeah. So, so, um, and she was able to crush another one while doing so. So Wanda, yeah. yeah, Wanda wins that fight. I'm sure Hulk gets killed there. And then my wife called it in the next bit as they're trying to fly away, which as they're flying away, Scott Lang is flying with the, <laughs> with the, yeah, the cape, cape, Doctor Strange. 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 Yeah. and uh, now he's not on Spider-Man. It's ba- it's attached to Scott for the rest of the episode. Um, but my wife called it giant wasp grabs their ship as they're trying to fly away. Then they get away. Yeah. So T'Challa, Peter Parker and Scott Lang's head and the Cape are the ones that are survivors at the end of the episode. Since we saw it, it was, Black yeah, they're, fl- they're, they're, they're just flying to Wakanda. Now. They flying, yeah. they're flying to Wakanda with Scott Lang, Spider-Man and Black Panther. The episode ends with zombie Thanos with the with infinity f- gauntlet with five stones yep. and they're bringing him the mind stone and they're bringing so. him the mind stone in Wakanda. So. And it ends with him like this yeah. because he's a fully cognizant zombie and titan. a zombie titan, zombie titan, and yeah. uh, but not a deviant, but not a deviant. And that's how the episode ends on that cliffhanger. It's probably either going to get a sequel this season or in season two. Most of these episodes will probably get sequels in season two that end with cliffhangers, but uh, zombies potentially has one for this season uh, that was rumored. Let's but let's talk ready? about the. Let's talk about overall zombie logic. Not like what, like there is no, seem to be no zombie logic. Like 
zombies that can run are always scary, scarier than zombies that can't right. in media. But these zombies, the ones that have abilities, maintain their abilities. Yeah, they all seem to be able to still use their machines, like Iron Man suit and stuff. Right, Hawkeye can fire precise arrows. So why are the other human zombies not using weapons? First of all, like that was my one of my first questions. Like, okay, these people all are still cognizant. Why aren't the zombies using guns? And sure. like that doesn't make any sense to me. Right, since it, it, the world should be functioning to fight off to be trying to find any non-zombies. Yeah, and so like, like there should be military. To helicopters being flown around trying to find non-infected people there should be full, like it just yeah, and it's like they one of the first things they say to the zombie logic of you have to go for the head that you don't see that at all I mean, koye kills falcon like that like but cutting him in just, half yeah <laughs> that's the only time you see that's, that happen, yeah so nope. there's the whole uh in the comic books they the person the big bad that they're able to turn is galactus by the way Galactus becomes a zombie and then okay. the zombies win. And that's when they find out that it takes five years of not feeding. It basically cures itself, but they still are zombie ish. But yeah, the, the zombie logic just didn't make sense. Um, as we go through first big issue I have is vision. Like, so the yeah, episode the hu- up to the vision humanity. point is like, this is okay. It seems like you're building a good story. Um, I like that it came from the quantum realm because I want to hear more about the quantum realm. Sure. Um, it's cool to see which people have been turned, which ones haven't. I don't like, and then I was like, I don't like the fact that they still have their abilities and powers. Yeah, that doesn't make sense either. Um, Couldn't Vision just like Mind Stone laser them all? All of them. You would think. Um <laughs> vision vision is like the biggest upsetting thing like i get it's a different universe so this vision is going to be different than the one we know of but vision as a character really shouldn't have that much of a difference because of who he is like he is the mind stone version of vision that has jarvis ultron tony Hulk, stark like so all of that being like extremely logical he should be, he should still want to care about humanity. Like, right. And he's just saying, screw you all. I'm feeding Scarlet Witch because my love for her is greater than all of the Infinity Stone-based knowledge and everything I have in my head. Right. It makes no sense. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> There's I, a lot of the, like the, 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 the what-if things that... I mean, that's what it is. What if? What if? You know? Yep doesn't have to make sense but that makes the least amount of sense and then he flips a 180 my wife was like that was quick it was literally like two minutes later in the episode he's like i'm doing something wrong i shouldn't be doing what i'm doing doing." this for a year i'm feeding my my zombified girlfriend human flesh and it's like that's wrong you're right let me do what's right not only that but it's i'm made out of material the the material i'm made out of comes from the place that i'm from the guy Black Panther comes from Wakanda, where vibranium comes from, which is what I'm made out of. Yeah. Like, oh, now that I'm talking to people, even though I've been able to talk to Scott this whole time. T'Challa? Um, like, you bring T'Challa in? I don't know. Now, now I feel bad about it, all of a sudden. Even though he seemed so sinister initially, like he was yeah. planning to feed them all to her. Right. But then all of a sudden, just boom, I flip. Nope, I feel bad. Kills himself. And I was like, like th- I think that is a deep artistic take. Like, Vision killing himself is a right. very, like, whoa moment. But after doing what you just did, it wasn't a whoa moment. Like, it yeah. was like a... A womo. A womo. Like, this was, it was just stupid. It was, I, Vision yeah, I, was the I worst huge... part. He looked cool. He looked cool. That was it. And because it was just, like, the storyline didn't make sense for the character. And then it flipped so fast that it just kind of like again maybe it would be better i've mentioned it in previous episodes maybe it would be better if it was an hour episode and then we would have been able to build Yeah, there's a couple of those where but man that was bad i hated that i hated it so much Um, scarlet witch zombified scarlet witch if she had all her power she'd be able to kill them all in a matter of seconds seconds. yeah there was some predictability like the wasp thing but the vision thing and then the zombie logic um, and o- overall, episodes overrated. The fact that people are saying it's the best episode yet, 
I think are jumping on a bandwagon or are huge fans of the that comics a lot. and have been waiting for it. Marvel with Marvel takes a lot a lot of the time someone will read something and they'll be like that's my that's my take that's now. what i think now and that happens in sports that happens in marvel but yeah. like like shang chi shang chi might not be as good as we're all saying but we've all been deprived of marvel movies for so yeah. long and the big people loved it at first they've been hyping it up people like you and i loved it yeah people hear it and they're like yes yes i agree i agree 98 percent score i'm gonna yeah. give it a 10 out of 10 like it's probably not a 10 out of 10 movie in the general sense yeah but when you've been deprived of people so long and people jumping on bandwagons, it's a 10 out of 10 movie because of that. And like, I think that's what's happening with the zombie episode was people are jumping on bandwagons and saying, yep, it is. It is the best episode yet. But like, if you want to take it from a critic standpoint, I think episode four is best with Dr. Strange. If you want to take it from a fan service episode, I think episode two, which is yeah. best. If you want to talk about the next best fan service and like overall like retelling of a story episode one is best like yeah every episode i feel except episode three has done something better than the zombie episode in every sense yeah um even in like a like an art visual standpoint dr strange gets the advantage so i mean anything dr strange related is just cool to see in general and it involved the watcher more and like yeah and they even mentioned that it's going to have the biggest effect on the mcu so from like a potential future what's going to happen aspect different other episodes beat this one right so the thanos thing and the falcon actually having powers those were the two like coolest things from the episode but even then thanos can use the infinity gauntlet and he's a zombie scarlet witch and thanos by now should what be would working thanos, together right if, if they don't have cognizant mem- like thought they do have thoughts like what if if thanos got the last stone is he going to snap what, all what half of the zombies? Snap? Right. Or is he going to snap all the zombies so that he has food? Like what? And like, if the zombies are all like, they seem to be teaming up with each other, right? Like, yeah, the that, non, that's, like that's the zombie non- logic they got right is they hoard together. So why are Thanos and Scarlet Witch not working together? Scarlet Witch clearly still loves Vision because she gets mad when Vision's dead. But if she still cares about the other zombies, like if she wants to be part of the horde. Yeah. Why isn't she working with Thanos to help take over the world and help the zombies rule all? Like the right. comics tried to, like in the comics, all the zombies ruled together to try to defeat Galactus, and they right. do. Overrated episode. Um, I apologize to the people that loved it because I did not. Um, yeah, it's I, right I I had a I had a moment today where I called you on my way home, and I was like, "All right, here's the things I liked about the episode," and then there was a big like, pause. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, let me tell you the things I didn't like about the episode. Because so, it was way easier to think of stuff that you don't like than there is the stuff you like about it. And like, yeah. we're maybe because we're just being contrarian this time around, like people aren't going to like it. But like, I did not jump on that bandwagon. I'm not trying to just be devil's advocate. I genuinely, as I filled it out, I have my live notes in front of me because I fill it out as I watch. I pause, do all that. I said, overall, wasn't a great episode. That was the first thing I wrote down yeah. when I was done. I just didn't like it. And uh, if you did like it, that's great. But um, tier list, if we were to do a tier list, I would say episodes two and four are A tier. I would say uh, this episode is C tier. And I would say episodes one and three are D tier. And I would even say D tier for one, F tier for three. Sure. Just so far, so far, two Gotta and four. Got to be excited for number six then. I'm ex- I'm always good. excited. Yeah, every other episode has been so good. So episode six, my expectations are way up there. If it ends up being the party Thor one, great. Sorcerer Spider, great. All I know is the final episode of this season is the Watcher going to be getting all these people together to fight a big bad. Uh, the Ultron with the Ultron Thor, with all yeah. six Infinity Stones, which yeah. I don't know how they would beat it anyway. Beat that, but yeah, we'll find out. Anyway, that's what if. Do you have anything else? Uh, I do not. All right. Oh. That's what if. Uh, thank you for watching our what if segment. I'll probably split this up into its own video. So um, sure. thanks for watching. Um, we're going to move on. Yeah. So this Holy is shit. A- Facebook is racist. <laughs> Holy shit. Facebook is racist. Uh, yeah. This is the final section of the podcast. Our miscellaneous section, our news section, our fun section, our fun, exciting section. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, we're going to start with Sheesh, Facebook is racist. Uh, 
in 2020, there was a video of a white man and a group of black men having an interaction or encounter, as the article was listed. Um, after watching the video on Facebook, Facebook asked its viewers if they would like to see more videos of primates. What's wow. Zuckerberg? What's Zuckerberg doing over there? <laughs> what is? That's the most racist thing I've ever. Oh my god! Like I'm trying to think of a more racist thing a company did in 2020. In my opinion monkey primate for any person of color but especially black people oh that is horrible that is, like in my you know, like, there should be a settlement somewhere I'm like god, god there should be my god they i mean facebook dropped the ball on that one yeah right? like because it's like is that something with your algorithm like and what in your algorithm caused that do you have How racist you- text in the code of your right. website right <sighs> yeah so i just wanted to put that out there if you haven't so i deleted facebook a long time ago i, I recommend people do the same <laughs> uh i just man they've had data leaks they've had the worst ceo in like the history of companies they have racist code built into their website what other evidence do you have ex high school people that just want to come and stalk you they don't care about you like yeah. facebook's the worst anyway so if you're on twitter you can you can find our handles at glazier at glazier Glaz- campbell and at, at jj jaffet plane jaffet plane or go to the gaming channel at at glazier gaming <laughs> i mean I, just get off facebook stay on youtube go to twitter go Twitter's watch some sex. tiktoks you know <laughs> go watch. all of it sucks but it's better than facebook you know yeah. speaking of tiktok <laughs> speaking of tiktok we might be doing some uh some dance videos who knows yeah I was th- we're gonna st- we're thinking about doing some tiktok challenges um there's some of the popular ones that we're thinking of like bus it um big bank we I could eat. always do you know how you know how we always talked about doing those covers of songs I'd have to create like, a tiktok have, first that have two like a female part and a male part or like two different parts yeah that yeah. could be something too. That could be good, but um, I think the TikToks would get it. Like well, we might I mean, be able to start saying, an OnlyFans. I have just five songs right here that have two parts. Mm-hmm. Like I've been saving these for years. I don't even know when I created this note, <laughs> but I've been I've been just adding songs to this for us to do. Can so. I hear them? Oh yeah. So we got "Bring Me to Life," "Pictures." That's one you'll recognize easily. Yeah. Um, yeah. Show fancy. Girl. Fancy by yep. Iggy and Charlie XCX. Yeah. yeah. Miles Away. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kellen and uh, Memphis Mayfire. And then Bottoms Up. <laughs> I would be interested to see who gets who in all these. Let's see, you don't know. We don't yeah. know. We don't know. I can be the girl's part for one and you can be the girl's part for the other. Once, uh, once we're able to monetize, I'll upgrade from my free editing software to adobe which will give me audio which then i'll be able to sound mix so we can sound good when we sing (laughs) we don't need it we don't know we could just go acapella yeah right i mean we could i feel like we would lip sync lip sync oh but (laughs) no (laughs) anyway so facebook's racist and then um another thing so we saw rick and morty if you're fans of rick and morty they did a couple live action clips to promote their finale right um including the guy who plays doc brown playing yep. morty or rick playing rick, morty, playing yeah. rick um and he was a perfect uh perfect casting and yeah, that it was has great. people talking about put, i like, didn't even know he was still alive to tell you the truth i knew he was perfect. still alive because i am a fan um he is the librarian in a movie called page master which was one of my favorites as a kid and so i've just kind of always like look paid attention to some actors that we mentioned earlier i'm a movie buff i, I like i like actors and yeah I, I thought that was cool people saying they wanted to m- turn into a live action movie or show no thank you just for me no thank yeah you. if you want to make it a couple like a run of a couple episodes sure but right make them go into a different universe or timeline where they become a real life for an episode yeah sure other than that um too much of a good thing does exist and that happens a lot in uh in movies and tv shows um perfect example another far from home uh comment here the teacher in far from home in the very in the first movie in homecoming 
Um, people thought his the, his teacher was super funny. So in the second movie, they decided, hey, we're going to put the teacher in a whole bunch of scenes. And it was not good or entertaining. Uh, another example, Carrie Underwood. Everybody thought her hitting huge screaming notes was perfect and amazing. So she decided to scream everything. Tell them about the uh, the radio your radio thing with uh oh but uh, before he cheats was a popular song which is my least favorite song of all time um i one time was listening to the radio and it was on so i switched the station and it was on the other station because i was i was listening to a pop (laughs) station switched to another pop station it was on that station switched to a country station it was on that station switched it to a fourth station it was on that station turned off the radio (laughs) Jesus, and you're at that point. You're like Jesus, take the wheel. At that point, I, I just started screaming, "Jesus, take the wheel!" Oh man, you're right. We don't need to. We don't need sound <laughs> stuff. We don't need <laughs> auto tune. We're good. Uh, we're set. Yeah. So, no, perfect example. Don't need the Rick and Morty to be permanently live action or need anything like that. Uh, another short clip slash trailer. Matrix Resurrection. If you're a Matrix I fan, I Keanu haven't watched fan. it. I watched yet. it. I watched it. They do. Um, I haven't watched it yet. So looks good. But... It looks okay. The big thing people were wondering was they recast Morpheus, but in my opinion, it's they didn't mention his name. In my opinion, opinion is a different character. Um, it's interesting. It seems like it has a modern take of how we are connected to the Matrix as a modern society. Sure. Um, and they make it seem as if Neo is now alive in the Matrix again, and he believes that his time in the first few movies, he wasn't sure, if, he's not sure if it's real, and his psychiatrist that he talks to keeps prescribing him blue pills, and then he meets Morpheus, who gives him a red pill, and he meets Trinity, and he feels like he remembers her, but they feel like they recognize each other, but they aren't sure who they are, so they're, they're back in the Matrix, it's a different Agent Smith, it's a different Morpheus, but I think they're just kind of cast it, like recast it, not necessarily like, or new characters, not necessarily like, because people were mad they want the original Morpheus. It's like, no, right. a lot of people Lawrence, were expecting. Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Um, people were expecting Neo to be like the Morpheus role in like a new movie with somebody new. But I, I kind of like the way that this one's going. Um, just seems like a more modern take. I think it's going to be overhyped and overrated. Um, it's a Keanu movie. I don't know. Well, those are know. those are almost always overhyped, and then people but tend to jump successful. on that band, but they all jump on that bandwagon. Yeah. Like, oh, it's Keanu! I loved Keanu. Similar to like, I liked him in du- as Duke Kaboom in Toy Story, but his character wasn't great. Yeah. And like, I like John Wick, but the direction and producing of John Wick is better than his acting, even yeah. though he does a great job. Yeah. So there, there. You mean the uh, uh, Bo Peep movie, Toy Story? Toy Story Four, yeah. Yeah, Bo Peeps. Yeah, where it focuses on her, where she's made of porcelain, yet somehow she changes her outfit. Um, yeah, just just throw that little thing out there. Um, but yeah, that trailer came out. It looks good. Um, I think I would like to see it. Uh, also, breaking news: since we're we're not going to be able to release this live, we're not streaming live. Which maybe we'll do that to celebrate fifty subscribers or something. We'll do a live mm-hmm. episode. Sure. Um, something like that. I think that could be fun. Yeah. Um, streaming on Twitch is that is that doable? We can stream on YouTube, just stream a live episode. And then once the stream ends, it just becomes a live. It just posts immediately as a video. Um, But yeah. uh, Yeah, I think that'd be fun. I thought about that today. I want to see it. But breaking news for us, at least Thursday, it was announced only like a couple hours ago. Eternals will be a theaters only release. Um, We've talked about it. Yeah, previous, we've talked about previous episode, they were going to base Eternals release on how well Shang-Chi did. Shang-Chi broke 2021 records, so Eternals is going to be a... They did not just a 2021 record. Well, I mean, I guess a a Labor Day record. Yeah. So, like, yeah, Labor Day weekend record. And so we thought Venom moved their date based on Shang-Chi. Eternals, theaters only release, thanks to Shang-Chi. So throw that one out there i didn't have that written down but i was perusing twitter while we were whilst i was delayed yeah and uh yeah that was announced and then just also breaking news another episode slash clip um the first episode of pokemon evolutions the uh youtube show this is the second like youtube only show that they have done first episode came out today i watched it it's basically the retelling of the sword and shield 
uh, campaign, just kind of from a different angle. So in my opinion, it wasn't great, but the artwork was beautiful. So similar to like, what if a couple episodes artwork, amazing story, meh. So I'll watch the next episode comes out in like two weeks. Like it's like t- the 24th. So um, yeah. it's gonna, they, they come out uh, ways apart. All right. So random local news. We're from Minnesota. So we'll give you a Minnesota and a Wisconsin news here. Um, a car in Wisconsin brought a cow through a McDonald's drive through backseat. Part of me thought like, is this, is this a person? I assume to- it's a calf. Um, the image, the, cow the cow's head was like the size of the window. So it might have been like a mid calf, like so. I get it, Wisconsin cheese, you know, cows, whatever. But sure. you're taking this cow through a McDonald's drive-through, where it's like, are you trying to show like some dark imagery? Where are you the, getting this is where you'll a be. burger? Do we know if they got a burger? Exactly, if they got a burger, that's kind of is that animal cruelty? <laughs> like, I mean, it's it's torture. Yeah, it, it, I thought that was so weird. But yeah, cow in the backseat of a car in Wisconsin. Um, yeah, weird. But the Minnesota um, news in Burnsville, this, this Minnesota. made me laugh. I, I read this earlier and it made me laugh. Uh, so. They're having a goldfish, inf- goldfish infestation in a local lake because people, locals are disposing their old goldfish in the lakes and growing to massive sizes and taking over the lake. Um, for now, those of you seen... that don't know, goldfish do gr- try to grow to the size of their container. So uh... I've seen piranha and this reminds me of that. And um the, in I, our hometown, I, people let uh, piranha loose in our lake. You remember Lake Orno? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they let piranhas in Lake Orno. Yeah. Because they thought oh, it would be funny. Lake Lake Orno was... Well, Lake Orno had to be drained and cleaned yeah. because of yeah. how disgusting it was. Yep. It was um, horrible. Was yeah, like, Burnsville, Minnesota. Goldfish in infe- Goldfish th- That's awesome. That's, I'm, that's awesome. <laughs> I like, saw it, a picture of one holy sh- it's like a tuna it is huge and i was like it's a goldfish that's awesome. i thought it, I thought so it was awesome. a fake like I, at first i was like am i reading the onion right now but no i was reading npr like, <laughs> my god national news thank good job burnsville another fun news there was a fossil found that's 43 million years old of a four-legged whale creature so it was a large whale and they they hunted and ate like raptors so like bird raptors and velociraptor they ate like them and so they're calling it the anubis whale named after the egyptian god of death so Um, here's a here's a question now now i know that whales are particularly well endowed yep yep blue whale has the largest penis on earth yeah so besides you um (laughs) so how was this like what was the uh whale raptor packing do you know like that's the first um, thing i would think of in the artist rendering of the animal that i was looking at um they did not show that um appendage but um if you would like i can send an email and see if they can get that artist to I render would, well what i would do is if um if you could just draw up You've got some pretty like I saw your Captain Marvel. You put like you put the uh, Hawkeye outfit on her. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you just do that with the with like the whale picture and just put it on screen? Maybe <laughs> give it, I'll give that. A shot. Maybe that one will be on Twitter, not YouTube, because yeah. YouTube. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's see what you what you think. Yeah, I mean, I took like four years of art classes. I've got a lot of like paintings and stuff. Yeah, and you you used Microsoft Paint. Yeah, so you know, yeah, maybe maybe we'll give that a shot. Um, the Anubis to, whale, what? The Anubis whale. The Anubis whale. A, yeah, it's completely separate from anything. Just the Anubis whale. Um, yeah, so look maybe forward could, to that. Like, you could like I want like I want a tattoo of like an Anubis whale. Uh, <laughs> and rest in peace, surfing. Oh yeah, rest in peace. All the rest of our news is video game news. So if you like video games, you've come to the right place. Uh, First, I'm a huge Knights of the Old Republic fan. If you could see my desktop right now, I have a game folder. And in that folder is Knights of the Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2. Because those are uh, two of my favorite games. I beat them on 
original Xbox, I believe. And um, I decided to get them on PC. I just think they're super fun. Um, and I've always thought that what they needed was a revamped graphics and uh, skilling skill leveling system because it's basically a perfect rpg um for people that like like to develop their character play through a game more than once and see different ways they can make a character it's a perfect game and you can um, customize with different gear amazing so um those it was announced ps5 only it will not be on pc or xbox but they are getting a remake so very cool honestly it's good enough to make me buy a ps5 because um, those games amazing so um insomniac speaking of playstation 5 insomniac they are um most famous for the spider-man game that came out for playstation f- uh, 4 which was one of the best-selling games of all time one and then the the, games of all then time the miles Mor- miles morales uh kind of remake of that yeah like yeah like a 1.5 version well yeah. they announced spider-man 2 will be coming out and there's venom on the poster of that which I've said too much on this podcast. I love Venom. And they also announced a solo Wolverine game. So this is a this is interesting because Marvel has always, or Marvel slash Disney has always had the rights to Wolverine as a video game character. Um, and so for them to finally, um, like they've thrown them in games, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, uh, yeah. Black Order, um, one two they like he's in all their all their games um so now they're they're teaming up with uh with insomniac to make to make a solo wolverine one yeah and the um, still shots or the like the short clip is wolverine's bloody fist in the bar with his yeah. flannel on at the bar yeah. and then while they have a zoomed on his fist the blades come out it'll be good if it's as good as the spider-man games probably gonna be the most i wouldn't be surprised if it's in the running for Game of the year, 2021, yeah. 2022. Some next got something there. I know they were also talking about possibly getting like a Daredevil game. That'd be um, cool. In the, the combat too. for Daredevil would be sick. Yeah. You could make, make it very Arkham Knights, Arkham Asylum yeah, style. Exactly. Um, and especially it's going to be a lot of like sneaking and like stealth. Exactly. Yep. You could make it very Arkham Asylum. It would be so good. I would play that too. Yeah. Cause you know, Daredevil also like ultimately has like a spidey sense of his own, you know, cause like yeah. all of his, all of his other senses are absolutely he can basically much. see because of how good his senses are yeah um then there's also the guardians of the galaxy game that we've mentioned in the past there was a new cinematic for that that was cool i want to play that game yeah that, that looks like it's good too bad it's only one player but still um and then midnight hunter midnight suns <laughs> we've uh, talked about that game multiple times but it is a card-based game which i did not originally know it was going to be card-based combat so if you've ever, you which you haven't you haven't played hearthstone but hearthstone's basically i played hearthstone i played hearthstone a lot yeah okay so the, there's like a new new mode in it which i think you would really really enjoy like the battle i haven't played it since i lived in colorado battle, something battle and essentially it's like tft's version of hearthstone like or okay. hearthstone's version of tft so it's like you build up your you build up your deck on the bottom of your screen the uh, enemies build up their deck at the top of the screen you make your you make these cards stronger as you like get new cards or whatever and then they just smack each other back and forth so yeah, it's you a like, simulated fight yeah but you but you have your hero in the middle and each each game is different because you have a choice of like two heroes but there's like there's like 20 heroes in the pool so like you could get any one of those two and have an option okay to pick one of those two so like one card like you can make your character revive or your other card you can put a shield on something like that and how does that so, relate to midnight suns so i'm assuming if it's something like that where like you're building your deck up of but the, but then it's this playable character so i'm not sure if like so to me it's like it looks like a f- mixture of final fantasy meets Yu-Gi-Oh meets hearthstone a little bit like it looks like Yu-Gi-Oh. you're playing as the character but when you get into combat it's card based and you can do actions upgrades to characters okay um it actually it looks it looks very very cool um because i love i enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh a lot too sure. um, i would love a modern <gasps> a modern game on like a twist on the old Yu-Gi-Oh games yeah we used to used to play i don't know if it was on your computer or it was my it was computer on, yeah we used to watch you freaking dumpster the 
all the computer, like the hard, the hardest level computers. The hard level computers, I was it was like 50 50, good chance that I won or lost because all it took was like one solid play. Yeah, and you, you're, you're missing like one card. Like you're waiting for the one, like we kept doing it because you had a chance to get the one card. And, mm-hmm. and Yugi has a high chance of getting Exodia. So you, if you wait too long and try to build your deck, he can just obliterate you. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it looks really cool. Like they have some playable characters that you wrote down as the yeah. hunter. Wolverine. So the whole point, yeah, the whole point is they're trying to stop a character named Lilith, mm-hmm. which I believe is a demon. You might have to look that up. Um, Lilith. Lilith. Marvel, sure. Lilith. Go ahead and uh, talk. Keep going. Um, so the hunter is Lilith's daughter that they end up resurrecting in order to beat her. So I don't know much about that character. Uh, the so first so. version of her, she was the daughter of Dracula. Um, there have been two versions of her. So I don't know much about the Hunter, uh, but I'm sure we'll find out more in the gameplay. They obviously wanted to include her in this game for a specific reason. And uh, then the uh, other version of her is the wife of Satan. Samael. I'm sure it's probably going to be a mix of both. Yeah, so the Hunter, we were talking about earlier how Marvel has the rights to Wolverine as a video game character. Wolverine's in it. Someone you're very excited to play, and I'm sure you will... Uh, you will once you try the game out, you will play this character, Robbie Reyes. Yep. Ghost yep. Rider. Um, so I like the Johnny Blaze version, but the Robbie Reyes version is sick. Yeah, it, it's the jacket for me. Some guy came into Subway when I was working there, and he had that, like, the, the leather jacket with the white, li- like, the white lines on it. And I was like, dude, I love your jacket. And he's like, thanks. He's wearing <laughs> a Punisher shirt. He had the Robbie Reyes leather jacket, Marvel hat on. I'm like, all right, man, I aspire to be you. I aspire to be you one day. <laughs> um, Blade, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Magic, and Nico Minoru. So, I would assume at some point they'll try to get Elsa Bloodstone. Yeah, some, Punisher even. I mean, you got Midnight Sun. Moon Suns, Knight. So might as well have the Moon Knight Sun, you know what I mean? Yeah. So Werewolf by Night. Uh, you could, if there's so DLC, far, which I'm sure there'll be DLC. So far out of all those characters, Ghost Rider, Doctor Strange, probably the two that I would look forward to playing the most. Uh, for me, it's probably Captain Marvel and Blade. Captain Marvel, I bet, will be OP. Blade Choices. probably will be, yeah. yeah. But Blade will probably be sick. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that's all we got. We are running near on time, but um, that's all we got. I hope you enjoyed the fun section this week. We had a lot more than we late have had lately. <laughs> so um, very, very cool. I will leave you with a quote before our little sign off here. First, um, if you did like this, make sure to like. Don't smash the like button. It takes enough abuse already. So just tap that like button. Um, we j- we're, over, we're over 20 subscribers. That's going to be 20 million soon. So get in there quick. Make sure to subscribe be, be, and be. Tell, say you're, in, you're one of the first 100. Yeah, be part Good of that luck. first 100 before we hit those millions because you know we'll remember you we we will remember your first like everyone remembers their first time you know so like remember the first time you hit that like button for us yeah remember that that time when you hit subscribe and it turned gray and it said subscribed Mm. oh mm. it's gonna feel good it's gonna feel good if it doesn't feel good send me a message on twitter at glazer gamble and i will have a word with youtube They've, I've, I've had direct correspondence back and forth with YouTube twice. Really? Just saying on Twitter, they have responded back to me and back and forth just for fun. Cause I was commenting under them Ooh. replying. So I got the in you subscribe <laughs> and there, you don't get a good feeling. First of all, that's my fault. You know, you probably just didn't feel me. Um, you feel but me. Otherwise that's YouTube's fault. What's that yeah. from? Do you feel me? Well, uh, Meg, do you feel me inside yeah. you, Brian? Yeah, that's it. That's you're it. eating hair. Uh, do you feel me? Do you feel me inside <laughs> you, Brian? But yeah, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Comment. We got a couple comments last week um, under our sports section. I would love to get some Marvel discussion. Um, yeah, you pay we'll attention to-, to if you ever see the Twitch Twitch streams. There's a lot of Marvel talk on there. Speaking of Twitch, that's basically every night from seven to midnight Central Time. I try to get that. I'm gonna take a break this weekend, I think, to get some mass editing and overhauling done. But um, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, Twitch has been fun. We actually got some good conversation about the most recent Shang Chi Marvel movie. So um, come on over, chat with us. Um, 
I think you, I think you'll have fun. The community part is the best part about creating content is talking with you. So discord be up soon. We're ready. Um, so before we send it, send Last. it off. Um, I, 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 this one isn't like a funny one, like last time, but I, I wrote down a few more of my favorite quotes and, uh, One's Frank, Frank Sinatra. Right? The best revenge is massive success. So uh, anybody that told you you can't do something, just succeed. That's the best. You no need to be angry. No need to fight back. Your fighting back is being successful and doing a good job, like we do here every week, every clip, every day on Twitter. <laughs> We're here for you. Bring in the content. Bring in the entertainment. Bring, bring the in fun. the energy. Bring in the fun. I'm not, not leaving. Episode 12. Wait for episode 1200 when we're at 20 million subs. I'm ready for it. I hope you're ready for it. Thank we you do for a, watching. You know, it is. It's going to be the 13th episode next week. Let's it do it. Uh, and Halloween's coming out. No, wait. That's next month. You know what? 13. <laughs> 13 13 episodes over here 13 episodes after next week so thank you're welcome thank you we love you gg g g